Hello and welcome. Today we're going to talk about actually charging my Teslas here using solar power that I've installed here on the garage roof. Solar, as you know, is available worldwide, some places more than the other. But when you do have solar, you can collect that solar energy, convert it to 240 volts alternating current, the same current that runs your house. And not only can you run your house, but you can charge your electric cars with it. Let's have a look now exactly what I do here in the garage to see how I can charge my cars using this solar energy. I suspect later it'll either get cloudier or more clear, but in any case, we're generating a reasonable amount of power. Let's have a look at the roof now. This is the what I call the big garage. The big garage has a place for all of my Teslas and charging, and of course, uh, my ham radio antenna is there. But located right up here on top is an arrangement of solar panels and they're hooked to those two 10,000 watt string inverters. They generate all the solar energy that I collect here on this garage. Now, one of the benefits is I actually have a second garage that's also powered by the same power and I also get solar energy powering the second garage as a twofer. Those are 330 watt solar panels and they're mounted to the roof, nice and high. All right, let's have a look to see what we're generating. Yep, 7,300 watts here, 8,000 watts. Second inverter, look at that, 98, almost 10 kW here. So what this means is that all the energy that's currently charging the Model Y is coming from solar and the balance of it is flowing to the grid. In my garage application, I have two 10,000 watt string inverters. There's one there, there is the second one there. The inverters are hooked across the 240 volt line. There's two 200 amp panels in this particular garage. I house all my cars here and trucks and tractor and other things. And this is a view of one of the 200 amp panels. Uh, it goes out to a 50 kW transformer located out in the yard that feeds the garage. Each inverter has its own circuit breaker. It's 50 amp circuit breaker. And I think each inverter generates around 40 amps. This is the disconnect where I can disconnect each one of those string inverters. But what does this mean to me as a owner of solar? All of the power from the inverter uh, here flow into this circuit breaker, which is hooked in parallel with the 200 amp breaker that feeds my garage. The energy coming from solar comes through this circuit breaker, it's a 100 amp breaker, and powers the inside here, which is actually connected to the grid. The grid then will get the remainder of energy used uh, that I do not use here in the garage, and that's allocated and calculated with the meter outside. So that's how it works. I have two 200 amp panels, primarily because I have two rows of Tesla chargers. I have three version twos on the front of the garage and three on the back of the garage. And with the normal stuff you would find in the garage, another 200 amp circuit breaker. This one uh, has the rear Tesla chargers, 100 amp breaker. Version twos share this 100 amp breaker depending upon what car is actually hooked to it. And of course, heat pump, air handler, and those types of things. But in the end, the energy comes from the solar, goes through the equipment here, through this 100 amp breaker, onto the grid here in the circuit breaker panel, and back out to the grid if it's not used locally. Some people ask me what these things are. These are midnight solar lightning protectors. They're across each one of the 200 amp circuits 
so that if I get any kind of surge from a lightning hit nearby, it gets absorbed here. Let's have a look now of the circuit configuration of my garage solar. What you're looking at is what's called a string inverter. Those are those 10,000 watt inverters. These are 330 watt solar panels. As you can see, a bunch of them are stuck in series, very much like when you put batteries in a flashlight. It provides a high voltage with a negative and a positive here, and it generates anywhere between 350 and 450 volts DC to the input to this inverter. Out of the inverter comes 240 volts AC, the same stuff that runs your house. So by installing a solar array in your house, you're able to generate the same power you buy from your grid, but this energy is coming from your own equipment. For several reasons, this is a really great idea. During the day, the solar generated power goes into your house. What's not used in the house, of course, floats to the grid if you are grid connected, which most people are. There are a few off-grid situations. But the problem is, is during the day, you're not able to burn up all of that free energy you generate from the sun. So the bulk of it flows to the grid to be used by the grid operator to resell to other customers without solar. So how in the heck do I actually make that work overnight using the free energy? I've added now a way to use that solar energy that normally flows off to the grid. Now, not all grid operators give you the money that you provide them in power. A lot of them will give you like power. In other means, if it's middle of the night, you can take back the power that you gave the grid for free. Some resell it to you. Some don't do any of that. and You just give the power to the grid gratis or free. And that generally sucks. So what I've done over in my house, I have another 20,000 watts of solar panels and I've installed Tesla power walls. That's what's shown here. Now what's a power wall do? Magic stuff. All the power you generate from your solar is measured and that same amount of power is applied to charge the power wall directly. When the sun goes down, the solar array goes offline and the power wall takes over exactly where the solar was by providing energy to the house. It will only provide a certain amount of energy that the house uses and not extra, and that keeps it wasting all of your free solar power back to the grid. It's really quite an amazing thing. I have three of these version two wall connectors. They're made by Tesla. Their whole job in life is to allow me to charge the car. I feed it with that 100 amp circuit there on 240 volts. Each one of these boxes have an additional wire that communicates with the other two and they allow the cars to share power. So let's have a look here what it takes to actually charge the car with that solar energy we saw. You unplug the connector. I drag it over here to the Model Y. I push the little button here on top. Charge port opens. I plug that in. Flashes blue for negotiation. Hear the click there and now we're charging green. Now what's happening here? That solar energy that I'm collecting on the roof of the garage is flowing into my car to charge it. Let's have a look in the car and see exactly what type of power we're getting. All right, the car is set up and configured here for 48 amps at 244 volts. Once you plug your car in, the power grows until it gets to the maximum 48 amps. In this case, we're getting 44 miles of charge per hour. And at this state of charge of 142 miles or 51%, it allows us to charge our car to 44 miles of extra range for every hour I plug in. Now, this car takes 11.6 kilowatts of power to get that 48. 
Now this car has a power factor of one, so it makes it very simple. Simply by modifying or multiplying this voltage, 243 by 48, and that's what amount of charge power. If I switch to this, it shows us that we're charging with 11 kilowatts of power. Well, we saw over there that the sun coming and going was on the order of 10, maybe a little bit more kilowatts. What that actually means is the solar energy hitting the roof here flows into the car before going to the grid because the car presents a lower impedance or lower resistance and therefore the energy flows to the car without flowing to the grid first. What's this translate to? I get a free charge when the sun is out or partially out as long as I have 12 kilowatts of energy coming from the sun. It actually goes into the car here and I can charge my car for essentially no cost if you factor in what it costs for the solar array and inverters, that quickly gets paid for with the amount of money that you would use for air conditioning, in a big garage here, charging a number of cars, welders, all those things during the day. All the energy usage during the day at light hours are provided by the solar panels. Therefore, I'm not sucking grid power at all. I hope this video was of some information to you. Solar can really offset the cost of your grid electricity. It gives you some form of independence by actually having power generated there local at your place. You run your house, you charge your car and appropriately save money. A lot of people say, oh, well, you don't save any money. You got to buy all the solar stuff. Well, that's true. However, if you don't buy the solar stuff, what happens, you continue to pay the grid operator every year for the rest of your life, and you never get out from under what it costs to buy grid power. Thanks for watching. I'll look for you again and take care.